What's going on there guys? My name is Matt or Chewy as most of you will know me as and in this month's Thrustmaster sponsor video we're going to be covering a topic I get asked about almost daily on my twitch.tv live stream. The question why do you fly Boeing aircraft with a joystick and not a yoke? I've got some background footage for you all of me flying the incredible new PMDG DC-6 in Microsoft Flight Simulator around Alaska. For hardware, I'm using the Thrustmaster HOTAS Warthog to fly the aircraft, as you can see in the camera footage. I think the whole debate around yokes versus joysticks is a really great topic of discussion as there is no right or wrong answer. Like most things in flight simulation and I guess gaming in general, your experience is completely subjective. The main reason as to why I prefer a joystick is simply for its adaptability in virtually all scenarios for flight simulation. Now the main difference really I guess between a uh, home yoke and a joystick is that obviously a joystick pivots around one point at the base of the stick whilst a yoke feels entirely different to fly with just because of the mechanics involved. Usually you'll have a rod at the back of the control column that you'll push forwards and backwards to control pitch, for example. This doesn't necessarily correspond with how all yokes work in real world aircraft. In fact, in a Boeing 747, for example, it does have a fixed point at the base on the floor of the flight deck, but with a two-handed control column on a separate axis. It's all rather involved and technical, but that's beside the point of this video. The big glaring decider for me as a home flight simmer is that I can comfortably fly Boeing's, Airbus, McDonnell Douglas, as is the case in today's video, general aviation aircraft, all sorts, with a joystick or yoke, but most importantly, I simply cannot imagine myself trying to fly aircraft like a fighter jet or a helicopter with a yoke. It just wouldn't work and would honestly feel way less realistic than how unrealistic people may think it is to be flying a Boeing with a joystick like I do now. I also find that a lot of the yoke products I've seen or tried in the past are pretty cumbersome and take up a lot of desk space and are a faff to keep clamping and unclamping between uses. Joystick and HOTAS systems, in my opinion, are much easier to move out of the way when not in use and I also feel give a cleaner look on the desk. There is also the topic of button and switch usage. As you can see, the HOTAS Warthog has an absolute plethora of different buttons and switches, including 15 action buttons in total, one trim wheel, two push buttons, five times two position switches, two of them being permanent, two times three position switches, one momentary and two permanent, and two times three position switches, three of them being permanent. All of which you can assign to whatever function you like within different simulators and the aircraft within them. Yoke systems that I've seen for home simulator setups are much more limited in this regard. A lot of the time you'll also need to purchase a separate throttle system to the yoke if it doesn't come included. Now, don't get me wrong, I do admit to loving the feeling of keeping the realism levels high by using a yoke with a Boeing aircraft or similar. And there is always the option of switching between a yoke and a joystick if you're lucky enough to buy both. My personal recommendation for those of you debating which to buy first though, is to always advise being able to get a joystick for all of the above reasons mentioned. It totally depends on the type of flying you are planning on doing, but I do feel a yoke can somewhat limit you to fully explore the full range of incredible aircraft we now have available in the flight simulation world. I've been using my HOTAS Warthog now for approaching five years and it has not let me down once. I can consistently rely on it doing exactly as I want it to and to handle the same no matter what aircraft I'm flying. This means I don't have to worry about unreliable hardware and gives me virtually endless choice for button combinations to top it off. Luckily, in the Thrustmaster range, there are a variety of different joysticks and host house systems to suit your needs and prices. I've done a whole video of this on my YouTube channel, which you can check out, and I've also linked some of my favorites down in the description below, so feel free to check them out. I hope you've enjoyed this quick video, just giving my opinion on a topic I've always found so fascinating within our community. If you guys have got any of your own opinions that you'd like to give in the comment section below, feel free to pop them in there. Thanks for watching.